I'm going to turn things over to Nancy. Sorry, everybody, I was muted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Nancy Kidry Hall, the State Data Coordinator here at the Division of Library and Information Services. And I'm joined by... Hi, it's Dolly Frank. I'm the Florida Electronic Library Administrator. Um, so I'm here to answer some questions maybe about electronic resources and statistics. And the, this is the second webinar covering topics on the annual statistical report. Um, this session is to hopefully answer any questions that you have as respondents. There are a few areas where I want to go into more depth than the last webinar. Um, I have earlier this month uh, just submitted the Florida library data to the federal level and I have some insights in to getting that data accepted that I need to share. Um, the topics that I want to take a deeper dive into are how collections and circulation are counted and reported, especially electronic resources. And I'll take a closer look at reporting programs. And there's a couple topics on uh, how cooperatives are treated with the data. And we'll take a really quick look at the very much abbreviated supplemental survey for this year. Um, there were a couple of questions from earlier this month and also from the sign up. One was about counting programs at a remote site owned by a library as um, whether that would be on or off site. Um, a question after the earlier webinar was specific about a program at a vending kiosk, which is not technically an outlet, and whether to count a program planned and held there as on site. And the, the answer to that would be yes, uh, do count that as on site. This follows the logic from a national discussion <laughs> from the other SDCs of counting bookmill, bookmobile programs at regularly scheduled stops as on site, since that's acting as an extension of the library. And another similar question concerned a building next to the library that they use for programs. And again, I would say this counts as on site under the same premise that is being utilized as an extension of the library. Um, another question was about seed libraries. And they do not count for circulation because by definition, they're not, nothing's being circulated, only going one way. Uh, collections, no, because there is a new item in collections for other items, but it's specifically phrased other circulating physical items. Um, but programs, why not? I'd say uh, for seed uh, libraries, I would count each session or other batch situation that you might have for seeds. I'd count it under all ages as a self-directed program and in-person self-directed program. When you um, when you say sessions, Nancy, you're talking about, for example, is if you've got somebody coming up to the counter and getting one. Oh, is that I'm sorry, a each season, each season. Season. Okay, season, I'm thank you. Yeah, each season. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, like you got you got your fall seeds and then you got another batch for uh, for uh, spring. And I, I would count that as a program. One, 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 one season long program. Yes, one okay. season long program. And then each person that checks out a packet or, or several packets as a participant. And were there any other questions at this time, Amy? Okay, all right. Um, so this is my second year preparing the data to submit to the uh, IMLS and Okay, somebody asked to explain the season question. The seeds? Season. So Paula, um, this is Dolly. When you're asking about the seasons, this is specifically 
about the seed libraries seed that libraries. some li libraries yes. have. And so. Oh, oh well, I mean, they, they have seeds for a specific season, like I, in, in Leon County, uh, they, had, they had spring seeds. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, so if you, know, if, you, if you, for example, if you purchase your arugula and spinach or you get your arugula and spinach and other things that grow in the wintertime, then that would be one season right. worth and that would be a one program. Right. So it'd be your winter, fall, winter program. And you count it as one. And then I'm not sure how that works in South Florida. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. So I did that. I guess I guess if you live in South Florida and you get the same batch of seeds for both seasons, it still would be two programs. It'd be if you're if you're if you're having yeah. two, you know, two yeah. time periods when you're yeah. planning, giving planning these out winter, or yeah. Spring. Or you run out and you get another batch in. I would say that's a that's a, a new program. Okay. Did, okay. And so, Paula, that that worked. It looks like it. That explained it. Good. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, let's get into the county and the collections and circulation. And like I said, um, I, I I think I got a better understanding now of the um, relationships between collections and circulation. And, and, and it's very, I have to admit, it's very complicated. And this, this year, it's a little bit even more complicated because we've added other physical items for both collections and circulation. But, um, but it's all good. And I, I want to explain more about the electronic collections and circulation in particular because they're very good measures of growth for a lot of libraries now. And I, I think it's very important to track it accurate, as accurately as we can. Um, this is what the collection section looks like now. It's a, it's a little neater with the items grouped into electronic and, or physical. Um, and as you see at the bottom, there's other circulating items. Uh, so count, it's all of those park passes that you might have and all the garden tools and fishing poles, count them in both collections and for circulation. Um, I wanna take a look at two of the more interesting items in this section, which are eBooks and databases. What counts as part of your collections? There's a lot of possible scenarios with all the products and services and various models out there. So I just want to clarify, um, ebooks that count for collections are something that you own or lease. So you're not necessarily counting everything that your patrons might have access to. Uh, for instance, one example is having access to Hoopla. And <clears throat> that doesn't mean that you have an additional half a million ebooks in your collection now. Um, you can count the units from such services that your patrons actually use. It just depends on the access and payment methods. And I'll get to more specifics about that in just a bit. Um, but related to that is the number, the next item, which is the number of electronic collections. And this, regardless of how it's phrased here, it just, it means databases. The number of electronic collections means databases. And these are defined as a collection of electronically stored data or unit records with a common user interface and software for the retrieval of the data. You don't want to count the ones that are freely provided by third parties and that you just might have a link to on your website. Um, items from these electronic collections do not have a circulation period. And you want to include electronic collections that are available online or they're lo they could be locally hosted by your library. And also you want to count the ones from your MLC. What you don't include here is those supplied by the state library. That's the Florida Electronic Library. And there, the item under that is pre-filled. That's what 
how many Dolly will be providing to you this year. I'm not sure what that number is yet. <laughs> Neither is Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's already filled in there. And, and what we do want you to count is the use of the FEL resources, and that's through the GAIL interface. Um, and that counts as a successful retrieval of electronic information. And so to sum it up, if you have electronic resources available through your library, um, how do you count them for collections and circulation? We have to co kind of go backwards here and start with how an item is accessed to categorize how it's counted in circulation. If the item in question requires the patron to log in through the library and it has a loan period, it's going to count somewhere in the circulation section. If it's a, a free access item and your library is just providing a link to that service, uh, like for instance, Project Gutenberg, um, that does not count towards your circulation and it doesn't count as part of your collections. But anything that's accessed through a sign-in should be counted. The next decision you get to is whether this item has a loan period. If it does not, the action is considered accessing a database. And that would be a database your library has access to through the FEL or one that you should be counting in the aforementioned number of electronic collections. And that action is counted as successful retrieval of electronic information. And this count, it might be primarily through Gale that you're getting this figure, um, which makes it easy to get the counts. Um, if you have other databases, um, you should be able to access the count to add to your to, to add to this total. In in uh, uh, one so so one of the complicating features is that if you purchase the database or you get the database from one of your multi library type multi type library cooperatives like Plan or Nephilim, Cephalin, TBLC, etc. If if you are are getting them on your own and they're not part of the FBL, then you count those and the circulation. If it's through the FBL, you don't count them as part of your collections, but you do count them as part of your circulation. Absolutely. Not circulation, that's not it. Re successful that's retrieval of resources. Yes. So, so basically, I'm making this up. Say you get um, like the legal forms from Gale that is um, not something that is supplied by the FEL. You would count that as one of your electronic collections. And then you would count, you would you, you go into the Gale database dashboard and that should be there because you've purchased it from Gale. And all of your FEL resources should also be in that Gale dashboard. That you, if you've got if you've got Gale resources that you buy on your own, you can combine them and pull all of those out of your Gale dashboard, and you will count all of them together as that successful retrieval of information. Yes. Am I making sense? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the terminology that's troublesome here uh, to me, and and we're kind of we're kind of stuck with that. But yeah. like I said, the, um, as far as, sorry, in the collection section, it's under number of electronic collections. That, yeah. That's your databases. And then database use is called successful retrieval of electronic information. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the key to know here. Um, now, Gary's got a question about Hoopla. Do you want to answer that now, or do you want to wait until we get to? We're almost there. We're almost there. Okay. And then we can talk about it. We can talk about it some more. Okay. okay. <laughs> and that's okay. Leading me back to uh, the next bit, which is these uh, the things that might be part of your collection or coming through a service like Hoopla or EverDrive. 
um, they all count under the use of electronic materials. So they, they are part of total circulation and that's also divided into either adult or youth. And is, is there a slide for that? That we're getting there. It's okay. At the, it's at the bottom of this, and then that leads to the next thing, okay. which is, which is, here, go ahead and the there payment model. <laughs> there it leads to the payment model, um, and that's the deciding factor here. If it's a pay per unit, which is that's hoopla. Oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pay per unit is not hoopla. Uh, where you have at least a certain number of titles um, of either books or other downloadable items, you count that total as part of your collections. So if, if you have paid for, for each unit, yes. So if you bought 100 ebooks or lease them for, a, or lease them for, for a the period time of period. time. For the year or whatever, right? Through a subscription service or yes. right out, yes. outright buying, then that would be a collection and you count that in your collection. And that's overdrive is, is overdrive like is that. a good example. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the other model is pay per use. And if you're paying a monthly fee for a finite number of titles, or you pay by each use of a patron, you only count the amount that's part of your, you only count that amount as part of your collections. So if somebody, and if you've got 100,000 titles, but people only use 10, you count 10. You count 10, yes. And of course, that's part of circulation as well. Does that answer the question? I, I can't see the question. So the question is, is Hoopla mm -hmm. specifically counts, the question is, is do you count the use of electronic materials, but not the number of electronic books? You count the number of books that are used so, so are checked would, out that are checked out. So you could be using the same number for circulation and the, as the number of electronic items for, for that, Google. for that service. So yes. that's it. So Absolutely. that's yes. Absolutely. So if you, if somebody, now what would be interesting is if somebody, if somebody, you track it, if somebody downloads, like one patron downloads, I'm going to make it up. Um, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I realize that Harry Potter is not on Hoopla, but I'm making it up on the fly here. So, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, and then three patrons after that also download that same Harry Potter. You is would that, count that four times. You, so you could count Harry Potter four times. Yes. Okay. It'd be the same as if you had four physical copies. Four physical copies. Okay. Um, so you. So if next question, if a thousand items are circulated in Hoopla, I count that in both circulation and collection. Correct. Yes. Yes. And and I I just want to say um, as far as discussion at the federal level. Um, none of this is codified by product by, by the federal government. And there's a collection of the state data coordinators that um, you know have, have discussed this at length. And the, the big ones, of course, like Hoopla and Overdrive, they, they have definite opinions on, but there's, there's so many different products out there and- So many variations. Variations of yeah. models. And I, I have to, I have to tell you the truth, I'm not familiar with a lot of them, but if you have questions about counting an electronic resource that you're using or considering, I'd be very happy to discuss it with you and it would broaden my knowledge mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, and I, and I think I think as a general rule of thumb, if you're paying for an item, like you're buying an electronic book or you're leasing an electronic book and you know, here's Harry Potter, it's gonna cost me 65 bucks, for the electronic version, boom, I've got it. But if it's, I have a whole bunch of things and the user can say, oh, I think I'll do this and I think I'll do that and download it. And then you get the bill for that after the fact right. or sort of as it is the process through. So you're paying for the use of that. Um, most of the models are gonna be sort of one or the other. There shouldn't be too many where it's so 
And I'm not going to well, say that 100 percent. But if it's so crazy that it's neither one of those, we want to hear about it. Yeah, and I've seen I've seen some things like passes. Yeah, like you buy a monthly or you you've given your patron a monthly pass, and I don't know how quite how that's charged or if it's charged. Well, if differently it, for different things. And I guess so. the question is, is, is if you've got the pass, do you pay for the pass beforehand? And if they don't use it, doesn't you still pay for it? Or do you only pay for it after they use it? So we have a, another question in here. Katrina Evans says, my question relates to the cloud library. The way that works is we own the materials that are checked out by our patrons and are also checked out by patrons at other Florida libraries. In addition, all materials owned by other Florida libraries are available for our patrons. How do we count the checkouts? Should they be counted as circulations? Should some also be counted as interlibrary loan? Oh, you should see the face that Nancy's making. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome question, Katrina. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> and Vicki goes, yikes. I agree, Vicki. Oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> if you own, if, if you're saying you actually own everything in the cloud, in that cloud collection, I would definitely say that counts as your um, as your collections. But if what you're doing if it's, is it co-owned, like you buy some, uh, I'm making this up. Uh, all right, so Katrina buys some, and then Vicky buys some, but Vicky can use your the ones you bought, and you can use the ones that Vicky bought. Your question is, how do you count Vicky's if you're Katrina? And is it is it tracked? Is it tracked as such? And is it tracked as such? That's also a good. Yeah, we're throwing some questions back at you. Yes, it is. <laughs> if it's tracked as such, I think that might count as interlibrary loan. So if so, if Vicky is borrowing Katrina's uh -huh. books, and Katrina knows that Vicky is borrowing Katrina Katrina's books, she can say it's I L L, and because. They're her books, but another library is using them. That makes sense I to me. I think so. I mean, I'm just thinking of it as as a physical, as a, you know. So you track okay. it as a circulation and as an interlibrary loan. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah, so if Vicky's yeah, borrowing your books, Katrina, you can count it as circulation I've, and as ILL. I've, I've learned something. Yeah. But see, that's another model. Mm -hmm. And you can see why we're saying that we're not absolutely sure we know every single model that's out there because you guys are showing us some that we're like, okay, this is different. Let's think this through. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's important to know. It's yeah. It's important to know. I like that. Yep. Um, to further complicate things, and this is about this is about submitting the data um, circulation. There's a couple of sections that have to equal each other. Of course, um, I think the system it it auto sums the total of adult unused materials, but it also <clears throat> the annual circulation. It's also the sum of the physical item circulation and the use of electronic materials plus now the circulation of other physical items. So those three things, they, sh they should all have an adult and a youth component to them. If for some reason you can't break down one of these parts into age, um, please ascribe it to the circulation of adult materials because if you're using not counted for any part of circulation, uh, the IMLS considers the total of something that has a part of it as not counted to be not counted, despite what the auto sum show on the survey. And this year I had to do a lot of balancing in order to submit the data. And in some cases, if the circulation of adult and used materials wasn't counted, I had to assign the total circulation to the, to the adult uh, materials in order to report a number for circulation at all. So, so Nancy, I realized that um, you've moved on 
I wonder if what we want to do is hammer out some more of the electronic resources. We have more questions coming in. Oh, okay. And then let's like hammer those out and then let's get into this <laughs> new circulation of adult okay. and youth should also equal like the other. So let's back up one slide. All right. Yeah. And I realize that I, I, I realize I've interrupted your, your, no, your that's train fine, of but thought. I, I, I can't. I can't see. You can't see the chat. So, uh -huh. so uh, the question has come in. Are we all, so? This is back to circulation versus um, database databases use. and paper unit versus paper use mm -hmm. and ILL and I think other things are thrown in. Here's the question: Are we also counting them as use of electronic materials? Do we only count uses of our materials, only uses by our patrons, or do we count everything as use of electronic materials? And this is that cloud, it's still that cloud library where Katrina's got some, Vicky's got some, Brad's got some, if Rebecca's a, got some. It's, yeah. a, it's a shared database. It's a, is it a, it's not a database, right? You guys have bought these books. Well, like you buy these books and you, then you have provide them through this cloud library for other libraries to use, right? You own the books, the, the, the materials. I'm asking a question. Somebody give me a thumbs up or a yes. I'm not seeing it yet. Right, we own the materials and all Florida libraries can use all the materials owned by other Florida libraries. So they buy the materials for the for the ones that they have purchased. Then that's that um yeah that counts as under use of electronic materials. So and that's the circulation versus sorry versus the collections. I guess the other question all right so that's the other question that I have let's let's go back one Lie. Is there a loan period or is it no loan period? Okay. It's either it's either database use or you're checking something out. So so speaking about this particular so so the explanation that Vicky has put in is Vicki says, it's similar, it's similar to Overdrive, and it's the Overdrive Advantage Consortium in plan. We have multiple systems in the consortium collection. We know what um, OCPLC, so the Okaloosa County Public Library Cooperative, owns and leases, and we share part of it with the other participants. Overdrive separates the statistics for us. So yes. what we don't know is, Whose copy? So say, for example, Okaloosa has a copy of Harry Potter and Leon County has a copy of Harry Potter. You know that Harry Potter's been checked out, but you don't know if it's Okaloosa's or Leon County's. Um, and then Overdrive separates the statistics, but how do we count the access to our items or how do we count our access to items that may be owned by others? So if our patron checks out the Leon, if, if Okaloosa's patron checks out a Leon County book, how does Okaloosa count it when it's Okaloosa statistics and patrons? That's a good question. Well, if you know, if you know you have a finite number of units that you own as as one portion of the whole of, of the whole then you're counting that portion as part of your collection. But how do you count the usage statistics? But are you saying they cannot separate that? They can't say? Well, or if they or, can. Let's say, let's say, for example, that Okaloosa does not own any Harry Potter, and, but their patrons keep checking out Leon County well, I would over say and over That again. counts as, that's ILL. So Leon would count it as ILL. How does Okaloosa count? Because Okaloosa's patrons are the ones that are checking it right, out. Right, but there's two there's two data points for ILL. It's loans given and loans, loans rece received. received. So she would so both sides would count it as ILL. Yes, one is received and one is 
given. Okay. As far as circulation. But then the Leon would count it as circulation, but Okaloosa would not. Because it's not their book. The owner, the owner would count mm -hmm. it as circulation. Okay. We're just confusing and confusing. Um, so how do we count circulation of our titles that come from other consortium me members? I think I think we just answered as, that. As ILL. As ILL. Received. Yeah, received. And then Katrina says, yes, we own the light materials. And then Gary Earl has popped in and he says, he, his thought would be that you count the number of items owned in the cloud library, like that your library owns, but you would count the total number of circulation under use of electronic materials. Except if, is there a circulation period? And I, and I think if it's like overdrive, there would be a circulation period. So yeah. that's not electronic materials, that's circulation. Because if somebody checks something out at the cloud library and your circulation period, you have to have it, 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 it automatically comes off your Kindle in three weeks, that's a circulation period. Right. So that's not use of electronic materials. That's not databases. That's circulation. No, use of electronic materials is circulation. Is circulation. Yes. Successful retrieval, retrieval of, electronic of electronic information, information is, is databases. databases. See, even I'm getting it wrong. It is very confusing. And that's that it's literally taken me a year and a half to get a grip on this. You'd think that I would so. know this, but <laughs> see, I'm the FBL coordinator. I don't circulate. I have no circulation period, so I'm sorry. I'm confusing things. All right, there's about six more messages here. Let's see. Cloud Library has loan period, so the, that would be circulation. circulation. Mm -hmm. You can't break out who is checking out what from where. If you can't do that, it has to go in ILL. Because if you can't break it out. So if you don't know where it's coming from, if you don't, if, if that's, that's a different model. And I would say in that case, you would count that as if it's, if it's a shared resource, if it's within a co-op, there's a, there, it's a different answer from if it's from an MLC, I think. Or if it's, if it's a, if it's a interlocal agreement that says, we may not be in the same MLC, we may not be getting it from the same people, but we're sharing this resource as a collective. Because your inner local is going to make some differences too, depending on and if you're getting it from plan or if you're just buying it on your own. Um, so Vicki says we can separate the collection. We know some of the use of, of things we own, whether it comes from our folks or somebody outside the library. There are items we do not own that our customers use. Would that be ILL? Yes. It would be ILL. Yes, it would. Okay. Yes, most definitely. All right. So to complicate it even more, I don't think we can complicate it even more, Vicki. Oh, Thank you we so can. much. I'll bet we can. All right. Give it a try. So Vicki says, we pay plan a membership fee for the consortium so we can have content that plan purchases. Plan purchases it and makes the content available to everybody. So the Okaloosa doesn't own it, plan the consortium owns it, but Okaloosa can use it. Then they're essentially, they're leasing it. They're leasing, they're leasing it from plan, which means it's part of their It's part of your collections. collections. And of course you'd count that as circulation. If there you're paying go. them for it, you, you own it for that time period. So you're leasing the so and if it could be perpetual, it depends on how long. If plans mm -hmm. bought it themselves, you're leasing it from plan. So it's perpetual lease, but it's and it's part of your circulation. Yes. And Vicky says that's what we've been doing. Yay, Vicky! <laughs> <laughs> we should have you help us with this. I Thank know. you. <laughs> Vicky's hosting next time. Awesome. That's right. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna run it, right? You're gonna run that next year's stats webinar for us, Vicky. Please. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause right here. Any more questions about about counting electronic collections and circulation before we move on to the next complicated bit? 
How do we count those consortium owned books under collection? How do we count the consortium owned eBooks under collections? Are you paying, so the consortium buys them and you're using them? Is that, is that Katrina, is that how that works? They would be eBooks. If they're eBooks, then you would count them as your electronic books, right? That's, yes. So that would be under, there's a, there's, do you, is there, there's a list, right? There's a specific question about eBooks, right? Yes, the eBooks are part of, they're part of collections. So you've got your physical collections and your electronic yes. collections. Yes, eBooks and also the down, the anything down that's downloadable uh, audio and video units. So you just count them as part of your collection. Yes. All right, so, but then everyone is going to count those same books. So it looks like everyone has many more than there actually are. Which consortium are we talking about? Well, if Vicky was talking about plan a little while ago. So if, if you're a member of the plan consortium and you're spending that money for the, the so items the plan has bought. Are they, give, are they giving them to you for free? Or no, you they're, they're them? paying a membership, right? They're paying a membership. So, so here's, so. so if, if you're paying for that, then it's part of your collection. It's part of your collection. Yes. And, and, and for Katrina, it's Nephilim is doing the same. Yes. It's, so plan is, has got a consortium that Vicky's in and Katrina's got yeah. the consortium that Nephilim. But that's it's in, definitely, in it's part of your yeah. collection because your patrons have, have open access to it. How about starting with why we are counting these, says Vicky. Why are we counting these? Is the intent to establish, establish a finite number of items owned in Florida? Or is it to establish access to collections by library system? It is, this is at the federal level to basically see how Florida ranks among the other states. It's not. The, so so it's, it sounds to me like it's a little bit more, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be a finite number of items owned, but I think what they're looking at is to see is one of the things that they spend a lot of time doing at, I, at the Institute of Museum and Library Services is they say, well, are people still buying physical items? Are people starting to move more toward eBooks? Is the use of eBooks going yes. up? Are people still reading? Do we know this? Are do people, they, yeah. Do, do libraries need to be funded? Do libraries need to be funded? And if they need to be funded, do we need to fund them more? Because physical items may cost less nowadays than these eBooks that have really high, high subscription fees. So they're looking at these. And so I think the answer to your question is probably even more complicated than the question you asked, Vicki. But I think the short version is, is if you are in some way, shape, or form paying to access an item that circulates, like an ebook at plan, the plan is providing, you're sending the money to lease it, and I'm going to make it up. Walton County is also sending the money to lease it. Leon County is also sending the money to lease it. Just because there's only one copy, and I'm making this up because there may not be, Every single one of you is paying for access to that book. Yes. So because you're paying for access to that book, each one of you can count that book. Yeah. That I mean, they sense. don't they don't charge you by use, do they? They're they're everything is available if you're buying into that right. yeah, collection. We, okay. Yeah. So so we're not saying and, and I think I think one of the challenges is. And it's kind of hard to wrap our heads around it. If you've got one book and Okaloosa has it on the shelf in Okaloosa, it's easy to say, I have one book on the shelf in Okaloosa. But when it's like sort of an amorphous thing in the cloud and all sorts of folks can use it, it won't be at the same time. It's going to be sequential because there's a checkout period. I think, but because and you're, because you're purchasing that option, I think you can still say that you 
offer it as part of your circulating collections. I would say, yes. The, and, and what's going to change is the a number of times it circulates because you may have to wait, you know, your Okaloosa patron may have to wait in line for the, for the Leon County patron who has to wait in line for the wall. So, you know, so you might have, like I do, I've got stuff that I put on order back in, you know, April and I'm still waiting for kind of thing. Um, so, so your circul so your materials might go up, but your circulation might go down, which is going to make IMLS wonder what the heck's going on in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> are we are we good with yeah questions are we good about and because I've 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 still got I've kind of skimmed through the the circulation. I was going to say the 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 hoopla would be the opposite thing because you, yes. your uses would go up, but your your circulation they'd be flat. As, well, it's, yeah. yeah, it's dependent on it's a depend. The part you count as collections is dependent on circulation there. Yeah. And it's it, that's one to one. That'd be one to one. Yeah. Is it this kind of skewed thing? All right. Yeah. Like okay. Said, there's apparently different models out there. There are a lot. So, yeah. yeah. And 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 if we've got more questions or something very specific, you can contact us, of course. Yes, please. Let us know. Okay. But, right, but so this is very useful. So, you're going to move on to collections and collections, circulation. Yes. And I just, again, these two sections here, the adult and youth added together, they need to total what the same as the physical, electronic, and other total together. Um, and, and this year, I, I just, I put in zeros to make them balance out. I never took away any, if you put in something, for physical circulation, but not counted in, in a, adult and youth materials. I had to ascribe that to adult materials so that it would be accepted because they, they won't accept not counted unless that's going to be your, unless the entire thing is, is not counted. So, so let's go back just a little. Your blue box here. Mm -hmm has to equal the same as your green box yes. altogether. And yes. your green box altogether has to equal the same as your blue box altogether. Correct. And if any one of those items is listed as not counted, what happens? Well, it depends on how it balances out. It, if, if for some reason your physical item circulation um, is more than what you have for adult and youth, what happens there is, well, in what I did this year is I would take the leftover and ascribe it to the adult materials. So you just you just sort of fiddled with the so, so I, if somebody yeah. put in I've got I've got a uh, hundred physical items and somebody's used a hundred electronic items and we circulated a hundred fishing poles we got three hundred items but circulation of adult materials was was 50, 50 and circulation yeah. of youth was 50, you then had to take, take that extra, extra, two, extra 200, 200 and, and just plop it in. Put it somewhere because, okay. you know, I have to, I, I, I never took away anybody's a total, so. You just kind of I, added, I added the extra but, in some place. But they insist it has to balance. It, it has, has to, to be this, it has to be the same amount. Um, and then I'm, I'm just, I'm going to kind of skim over this part because it's, this doesn't balance, but it's just how it adds up the, the electronic materials, which is the eBooks and the audio and video, plus that use of databases, successful retrieval, that adds up to total it electronic content use, which is actually, it's not, it's not technically circulation that adds up to total collection use. It's kind of circulation adjacent, uh, um, but that's something that has to be reported as well. 
It confuses me too. It's, yeah, yeah, well, these are data points that the IMLS is asking for. So therefore we have to parse it out. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're, at, we're asking for the database use is, is really the problematic one here, mm -hmm. but it has to, it belongs in there with circulation. So they kind of take apples and oranges and say, here's the fruit basket. Yes, at the end. yes, yeah. show us your fruit basket. So are there any more questions about circulation and collections? I'm not seeing any pop in right now. Okay. Okay. Um, I will I will interrupt you rudely when I see one <laughs> come along. <laughs> well, um, so I'm going to talk about county programs again. Um, and, and again, this is about how the numbers are reported. Um, what's reported to the IMLS's programs is the first two parts of this, the active in person plus the virtual. And if you did the supplemental last year, you will know that they now divide, they want to know if, if, program, if the live programs were on-site or off-site. And this, again, this has to balance. So if you have your age divisions in the active in-person and you don't report on-site or off-site, um, again, I, I did a little creative math. And if it was not counted, I put that number on on site, but they should be equal. So, uh, so let me throw in, if you've got two active in person programs for adults and two for kids, you're going to say four mm -hmm. all together, it'll end up equaling four. If you don't count whether they're on site or off site, you're going to try and balance that by saying they're all on site. Yes, they have to be accredited. They have to they be have accredited to, to, to one or the other, other, or they'll say, well, you didn't capture programs. And if you <laughs> have an, an NC or a not counted, okay. that means they aren't counting anything and IMLS doesn't accept any numbers. They they, their, their position is if a total has a part of it that's not counted, then that sum should also be not counted. And so they just sort of drop everything. They kind of drop everything, but that's what, again, what I did this year, I went back and put, I put in zeros for the not counted to make To make sure that the to things make you that, counted To count. make there were some, so there were sums for yeah. anything. Um, yeah. And this year, um, this coming up year, I'm going to take that option out of the program section. So you're not counting, you're not, not counting, not counting. Not counted won't be an option in there. <laughs> um, and I realize it's, it's legitimate sometimes, but there were in the data last year, there were over 600 uses of not counted in the programs. And I know it was very complicated. There were two different surveys where we're asking for program information. And I, I really do understand it, but it was, it was very difficult to balance out. And this year, everything's gonna be in the same place. Um, and if, you're, if you truly you know, had programs in some category, but for some reason you didn't count it, it, you can put a note in there and that's fine. But if, if you know you didn't have programs in one of the age groups or one of the categories, just put zero in as the value. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and was, did anybody have any questions about, I'm not seeing about it. programs? I'm not seeing it okay. at this point. Okay. Well, I'll talk about cooperatives for a minute. Um, as they have some unique situations when I'm, you know, putting the, the data together to send to the IMLS. Um, there are 13 uh, cooperatives in Florida uh, throughout the state and there are various sizes. 
but together the the components of all these cooperatives there's like 50 uh, sorry 75 um what, libraries? libraries that that collectively make them up that report 75 reporting libraries um and regardless of the makeup of the cooperative some of them are pardon me countywide or multi-county in some are collections of municipal or independent libraries but regardless of the makeup um they only count in the end for the purpose of reporting the data they only count as one administrative entity so whether there's there's three branches or 30 you count as members. one members, members yes yeah. members of things uh, you count as one administrative entity for the purpose of reporting. Um, and we've had an, uh, some issues in the past with how the main libraries are counted um, to report. Oh, sorry. Why did I? I was muted. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry. Back to uh, cooperatives and and I say you can uh, you can only report either zero main libraries or one main library per administrative entity. And and functionally, I'm sure there's cooperatives that have more than one that function as, as a main library. Um, but for this purpose, we can only count a maximum of one. So uh, we have another question again from Vicki. Mm -hmm. And it is, we have not been counting any library as a main library on our cooperative survey. Mm -hmm. Then each member was counting main for their one outlet. Should a cooperative office call themselves the main library? No, no, they're not a main. No, they're not a main library. So, so in Vicky's case, she's got uh, a whole. She's a countywide cooperative. She's got a number of members. Um, and I'm going to say this: each one of them is a a library in their own right sure but then they have this in a local agreement uh, uh, that says we're going to cooperatively um you know use use each other's libraries accept each other's libraries cards and you know all sorts of all sorts of different things right but in their case because there isn't a single main library in all of Okaloosa County then her answer would actually be zero. Zero, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So and that's, that's, yeah. that's actually over, uh, my knowledge is uh, I think most cooperatives were reported as having zero main libraries. There, there are some cases, I can, I can think of at least one in the panhandle um, that have one main library that serves as the, the repository for, you know, their their databases and their ebook things, but um, yeah. and that I would think that would count as the main library, but but not all of them are in that situation. Yeah. Some are, you know, several yeah. several counties together, and you wouldn't you wouldn't pick one. You of don't those have as, one main. You don't yeah. have one main library. Yeah, I think I think that answer is I I I don't know. I haven't looked at the the cooperative situations mm -hmm. for a long time, but I'm kind of guessing that in most cases. The answer is going to be zero. zero. It isn't that there aren't. IMLS doesn't accept more than one main library per system. It's just the way they work. So what you really have is all of your libraries are main libraries, yeah. but since they don't count it, you got to pick zero because none of them is more main than the other, if that makes sense. And that does show. It does show at the um, outlet level, which. It's kind of hard to see the data on that. But, yeah. Um, so then you, so then you, when you have the independent, each of the independent things, you can 
you can see that, but yes. not when you roll it up to send it up to IMLS. No, right. no. For the purpose of this, there's the 13 co-ops. You know, either you, either you have no main uh, yeah. library or you, you, you have one perhaps. A co-op office can't be a main library if they have no customer hours. Is, True. Yes, that's okay. Good. True. Yes. Okay. So is that making sense? Um, yeah. All right. So Vicki says all co-op members say zero main libraries. Not necessarily all co-op members. I think Vicki, you are one. Um, there's so many what well, we've got 13 co-ops yeah. which means we have 13 ways that co-ops yes. have interlocals yes absolutely um so it, i think that other other co-ops might have a one because they have one main libraries and all the other ones are not considered to be main libraries but i think in most i'm going to say most cases all of the libraries are like the main library for the municipality or what have you and because IMLS doesn't recognize multiple main libraries for a, a single system, whether it be a single county system or a multi-county system. Um, if you've got lots of main libraries, then the answer is zero. You don't have one like super main, right? You have, so they're just gonna say zero. There's no main library, right? It's made up of lots of independent libraries so we're not going to say there's a main one, if that makes sense. There may be a cooperative that out there in Florida that has that, that has a main library and everybody else says, no, you're fine. You can do it all. You've got all of the bookmobiles. You've got all of the whatevers. You've got all, you know, all of the things. And we're just going to do our little local stuff and, and you guys run everything else. And there's going to be a main library. But I think, I'm not sure that there's too many of those around in Florida. Um, and if you think you are one, let, contact us and we'll, we'll um, affirm. Yes. <laughs> That's all good. We'll affirm. Yeah. We do, do have that option. All right. Um, and I just want to briefly, well, if I can change slides. Are we not changing? No, I might, no. Uh -uh. There we go. Ah, thank you. I don't know what happened. Um, so I just want to talk just briefly about um, recording income and expenses. And and I think in it's my belief that in nine of the co-ops, there's a cooperative uh, administrative office that reports at least some of the finances. And, the, and that's good, that's appropriate in most cases. Um, but when individual libraries receive grants, um, please be careful not to duplicate that in reporting. And what I, I've done is I, I actually go and pull the grants from our system to verify, um, but you know, just be careful not to duplicate. And I know last year was a little bit crazy because there were CARES uh, grants. And, the, and then this year there'll be the ARPA that also adds into the LSTA. Uh, it kind of complicates it, but just, you know, be, be aware of what your members and the uh, uh, co-op office are reporting. Yeah. So you don't duplicate those. And then um, ARPA this year will be reported under the LSTA line. It's the it's the same. Yes. It's not it's not a different federal grant. So you, you just add if you've got both ARPA and LSTA. LSTA it's add, add, add those, those together. together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess that's all for the co-ops. The additional survey, it's very little to see here, the, um, but if you had branches or outlets that were closed for part of the year, please let us know here. That it's just a link at the bottom of the survey. At, ASR. At, yeah, at, yeah, the main ASR. And it takes you to two little sections. Now the COVID-19 questions, those, the the federal government still wants to know the answers to those. And um, remember, they're asking for all 50 states. So other, yes. other states may be affected by this. So. Yeah. So, um, you know, I hope, I hope it's not the case. 
Mm -hmm. and, I, and I hope that we don't see this next year, yeah. but that's to be decided still if they want that reported. Um, now the, the other emergency closing questions, those in the, in, after this year, they will be incorporated into the main survey. Yeah, and, um, and other emergencies or things like, you know, did you, everything from, you know, did you have to close a branch for a hurricane? But yeah, hurricanes and floods. Floods, and, and, and uh, I think even if, if you know, we had a water main break and you had to close it down. Yeah, yes, if you're closed for any, any reason, let it, this is where you let us know. Any, any other questions? All righty. We're good. I'm not seeing any okay. at this point, although people are typing. Maybe. Okay. Who knows? I'm not sure. So we'll see. Okay. We're, right, we're right at, well, we just clicked over to 1201. So I think we're right at the end. Okay. Is yeah. And we're on, we're on Facebook and Twitter. And then of course this and other uh, and webinars will be available at YouTube. And our, you'll get the link to this one. Link to this one, and we've got a. I think our contact yes, information. Yes, there's our contact that. information. There's me. Um, yeah. And there is Dolly. Yeah. So, and and you guys know us. Um, send us questions. Call us. However, you'd like. This has been a little confusing because some of this stuff is so it's, well, complicated. This, and I'm afraid I've complicated things more by being confusing. Oh, we we are not over discussing collections and, and circulation. And yeah. there's a, it, it's. Okay, question. Uh -huh. How do we report the in-state percentage of expenditures? Or is it yourself or as a co-op? So this is Paula um, Chaplinsky. So I don't know. Is this as your? Well, it could be either way, right? If you are so so, the way that in-state percentages of expenditures works is if you spend, <coughs> if you write your check or you send your EFT to somebody who a, a vendor who resides in Florida, that would count toward your in-state expenditure. Yes. And that includes the MLC. So those leasing of the books that you're sending to Plan and Neflin, that money is considered to be in, yes, in state expenditure. Regardless of the ultimate source, um, um, you're still spent. Yeah, you're yeah. still spending your money in Florida. That's um, what we want to know. And if you're so a lot of some like con construction contractors are good, might be local. Your your uh, grass mowing, if you pay it for yourselves, will probably be local. Um, but if you're purchasing stuff from Barnes and Nobles or Amazon or what have you, the out of state, so that would be your percentage of out of state. Um, and then uh, salaries would be in state, yes. right? Yeah, and, and we're just looking for, for rough numbers here. We're not looking for, you know, you yeah. don't have to break down your actual accounting for us. And, and what we're really looking for, so if you if you see our most recent, um, it's not the ROI, but it's the, the Bieber study that talks about um, impact, for example, local impact. Economic impact of, yeah. Of so workers. what we're looking for is, is you got, you know, you are employers, you are community centers, your stakeholders in your areas, what kind of in economic impact do you then turn around and give back to either your, you know, very local or your, or your, the state of Florida. So, so funding libraries is important because to look how much money we actually spend in state, right, is, is, is one of the reasons yes. why we're going that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she says, okay, thanks. Okay, well, I think we, we ran over time just a little bit, but I really appreciate everybody. Yeah. And we'll, today we'll stick and around for a couple more okay. minutes. If folks want to jump in with qu last minute questions, we'll stay on for just a second. But um, yeah, have a great lunch now that we're <laughs> at lunchtime. And enjoy your 4th yes. of July. Thanks so much. <laughs>